Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this video, we are going to write equations from English phrases and use those to solve some problems. And when we solve, we'll be solving for a variable. So in these problems, if it says a number, it doesn't say what variable to use. You can pick any variable you want when it says a number. You can use n, you can use x, you can use any variable you want. Some things to review, and this is in your book, but sum means to add. Uh, difference means to subtract. There's some other phrases that mean these things as well, but these are kind of the big ones. Product means to multiply. And quotient is divide. I don't know if there's any that use quotient for a phrase. Another thing, this is very important, is that the is is your equal sign. So when you see an is, that's your equal sign. And again, a number, that's your variable. You can use any variable. You can use a different variable for every problem. You can use the same variable over and over. But that a number is when you're going to replace that phrase with a variable. So really you're just translating. You're just figuring out from words how you would write that with numbers and symbols. These are equations, which means there will be an equal sign. And for this, you're supposed to choose three of this first section, which goes up to number 10. Choose three of them to also solve and show your work when you solve. Then there's a couple word problems where we'll write an equation and solve. And then in this section here, it says choose any two problems from below to write equations for or use formulas for and then solve. So your equations must have a variable in them and show all work. So these aren't numbered because each dot, each bullet here is a new problem that you can pick to solve. So you pick a couple of them, solve them by writing an equation with a variable and then showing your work. Let's write a couple of these as equations. Let's do number two. It says five more than three times a number is 20. So more than, that's plus. So, so far I have five plus three times a number. I'm going to use x for my number. So this part right here will be x times, obviously, is multiplication. You can write multiplication by just putting the what I'm multiplying by, 3, next to my variable. Is 20. So that's your equal sign is is, and 20, of course, is 20. You could put parentheses around 3x, or you could write the multiplication as 3 times x if you wanted to. You could put a dot between the 3 and the x to show multiplication. So there's several ways to write this correctly. And you wouldn't get marked wrong if you did it a different way than what I have. And then after you write the equation, then you have to solve it. I'm trying to get a little more space here without messing up my equation. Let's see if that'll work. Almost. So then I am going to write this just a little bit simpler because otherwise it's going to be a little hard to solve. So you find this is the same as the solving equations problems we did at the beginning of this week. Identify your variable. It's x. Think about what's happening to your variable. In this case, it's being multiplied by 3, and 5 is being added to it. So we need to start on doing the operations by using inverse operations. So the first thing that I, I would undo would be the addition. So I subtract 5 from both sides. When you subtract 5 from both sides, you'd be left with, on the left side, just the 3x. Got your equal sign there, and then 20 minus 5 is 15. And then we would just finish this up by dividing both sides by 3 to get x equals 5. So that's part of number 2. You only have to solve three of them. You don't have to solve them all. For the, for the other ones, the other seven problems, you're just going to write the equation. You don't have to solve for every one of them. Um, let's look at number five, because less than, number four and five, 
both have the phrase less than. Less than, like if it's 7 less than x, means x minus 7. You have to flip the order when it's less than. So in number 5, 8 less than the product of 3 and a number, we need to figure out this part first. The product of 3 and a number, product means multiply, so that's 3, I'll use n this time. And 8 less than that means I have to put the 3n first and then the minus 8. And then the rest of the equation says is 16. Is is the equal sign. So that's how you would write the equation for number 5. Number 4 is very similar to that, so look at 5 when you do 4. Negative, they wrote out the word negative here. Um, negative 3 is just what it sounds like. Times a number, you can just put x or n or p or whatever number you want to use. And then minus 4 is equal to negative. I'll let you finish that one. So don't worry if it has a negative in it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a tough one to write the equation of. Alright, so let's look at a word problem to do. Let's look at number 12. Number 12 says that a tuxedo rental service charges $150 flat fee for a suit plus $50 for each additional day. So if I want to use D for day, I have to multiply 50 times that variable and add that to our flat fee in order to get our total cost. So write an equation to model the total cost of renting a tuxedo for X number of days. Oh, so I'm supposed to write this as X number of days. And then it says, then use this equation for the cost for four days. So this is my expression. I guess this would equal the total cost. And then they want us to find the total cost of X equals four. I'm using T to stand for total cost here. So then I would take 150 plus 50 times 4 days. This is very expensive, by the way. <laughs> It'd probably be cheaper to buy a suit at this point. But 150 plus 50 times 4, and then you would have your total cost, and this would be in a dollar amount. I guess I'll let you finish that up. And then in the next section, remember, you only have to choose two of them to write an equation or a formula and then solve. And your equations must have variables in them, so don't just put a bunch of numbers together and then say what the answer is. Figure out what the variable is. Um, how about how about this first one here about George is building a rectangular fenced in dog run. A dog run is just a fenced in area where the dog can run. He has 120 feet of fencing and wants the length to be 20 feet greater than the width. If you use all the fencing, find the width find the length and the width of the dog run. This is one where a formula will come in handy. This is a rectangle and we're really we're given 120 feet of fencing so we have that's the perimeter. We know that the perimeter needs to be 120 feet. We also know a formula for perimeter. If you have a rectangle the formula is you could do length plus length plus w plus w but a lot of people use 2 times L plus 2 times W. Now we can replace P with 120. And we also have some more information here. He wants the length to be 20 feet greater than the width. Let's write that. Length, let's write it in symbols. To be equal to 20 feet greater than, that means plus, the width. So when I see an L, I'm going to replace it with this expression, 20 plus W. So the perimeter of the whole thing has to be 120. I replaced P with 120. 2 times L, but L is 20 plus W, and then plus 2W. So I used a formula in this one, and an equation, L equals 20 plus W, that I got from the the reading of the problem. And now we have to simplify this so that we can find out what the width is. This will give us the width. 
And then once you find the width, you can come back here and say, oh, well, if the width is 10, then 20 plus 10 would be 30. Or if the width is 20, then 20 plus 20 is, is 40. So that's how you would find both of the variables using this equation here. So this is a good lesson to practice solving equations as well as writing equations in order to solve word problems. Let me know if you get stuck and I'll help you out and have a wonderful day.